Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. We've got another video for today. And this is coming from the test server. We have a new ally that is set to be released, Superman. I'm sure that's one that uh, people have been waiting for for quite some time. So once again, it's a legendary ally. It's gonna be 500 source marks like the others, and I'm sure a similar price in the marketplace. So let's take a look at the damage and the passives. Okay, so before we get into the actual spreadsheet numbers and take a breakdown of the single target and AOE damage, Let's actually show you the spawn animation of Superman here. And you can see there he basically drops in, does uh, frost breath, and then uh, flies away. So let's take a look and see what actually those numbers look like. Okay, so taking a look at the spreadsheet results here, we'll look at the, the AOE damage first. So for Superman, once again, it, it's going to be interesting to see if this is going to be working as intended or if it's going to be a situation where it's overtuned. But I mean, at the same point, I mean, everyone's going to say, well, it's Superman, he should be doing the most damage because he's the strongest. Well, I mean, <laughs> currently they, they got their answer. Uh, right now, Superman's damage is uh, double, more than double any other ally right now. So as you progress through the ranks, uh, right, right, you can see here the other kind of damage. That, uh, this is all tested at 339, plus I did the 378 examples. But um, So we're looking at like Batman and Laughs is 279, Bombshell is 260, at, th at th CR 339, Death Mountain of Batman is 355. Well, I mean, Superman exceeds all their damage at rank 5 or rank 4. So you've got presently this ally is... Um, definitely the strongest and it's pretty much approaching the levels of like what oh, zoom and, and uh, flash were when the allies first released so rank 10 you're looking at 717,000 damage at 339 and then the 378 test on a target you're looking at you know 1.1 mil where death metal batman was 582k going back to cyborg cyborg was even uh, 557 so Superman right now is doing double the damage of Death Metal Batman and Cyborg. But I mean, at the same time, I'm sure, uh, maybe not in the comments of my video, but the comments in the forums are all going to be saying, well, Superman deserves to be the strongest ally. So, but definitely it, it's in a situation where if this damage stays like this, it, it's going to be an absolutely mandatory ally. Um, well, even before we even get to the passive breakdowns in terms of that shield and in terms of the empire channeling and everything else, uh, just for the damage aspect, I mean, you can't you can't not get an ally that's going to be twice as strong damage wise than anything else. Uh, the only I guess slight drawback is is uh, compared to the some of the other allies is you saw the the damage over time it takes about three seconds as well it's it's uh, basically uh, freezing breath. So while it is high damage, there is a chance where the allies could die or, or the tank can pull them away, etc. Where, like Death Metal Batman, even though it is a delay, it's instant damage. Bombshell Harley's instant damage. Cyborg is pretty much instant damage, but same thing, it's still projectile based. But that's that's where I'm getting at, is, this, is the damage is not um, instant. It's basically damage. It's, it's not damage over time, but essentially you have to wait for the, the whole damage to play out, which could play a factor. So in terms of single target damage, same thing. Single target damage is not as overpowered as some of the others uh, just because of how some of the other allies work. So Superman right now is looking at 350k on single target at 339. Death Metal Batman is 343, so almost the same. Uh, you've got um, Flashpoint Batman and some, and some of the other ones. It's hard to judge, but Cyborg is pretty much the same at 344. Looking at the actual boss fights, this is where it gives a, a better better comparison. So this is all same thing done at 339. So on Flashpoint uh, Gotham and Doomsday single target, he did about 420k damage. Flat the uh, Death Metal Batman was 425. So it's, they're about the same. I mean that's that's pretty basically a wash. Bombshell Harley on her boss uh, was 360k. That doesn't really account for how the split damage works, but same thing. If we go to um, Flashpoint Batman was 550k. And then we go to House of Legends bot with 620k. So Superman is still much weaker than Flashpoint Batman and House of Legends bot just because of how those work with boss damage. So while Superman is incredibly OP for AOE damage, uh, if it's just a straight boss fight, then it's still not going to trump Flashpoint Batman or House of Legends bot. So 
let's take a look at those passives. Okay, so let's take a look at that first passive here for Superman. We're looking at Inspiring Breakout. So upon using a group breakout ability, it gives you and all allies a damage reduction shield that lasts for six hits or 30 seconds. Now that is rank dependent. So I'll cut to the spreadsheet at the end where it kind of gives the, the rank breakdowns. Uh, all the changes is the percentage damage reduction or the cooldown. So it ranges from like 30, 30 seconds. I think it rank uh, when it first is like 80 seconds. But I'll show in a moment that the uh, cooldowns not actually working as intended. So obviously that'll have to be corrected. But uh, essentially, as you read it, it applies all allies. So it's, it, this is a, an eight-man damage reduction shield. So no other way to look at that, which means that this now ally becomes 100% mandatory for all tanks, along with that Batman and Laughs uh, card proc. But uh, the other aspect, uh, the other ironic aspect, is it when <laughs> the uh, tanks get an eight-man shield, essentially shield, uh, before nature healers get an eight-man shield, which is funny enough. But taking a look here, just to kind of show it in practice here. I'm in tank roll, but I'm just wearing DPS gear, so I'll have a little, I'll have a lot less survivability. But uh, essentially what's gonna be here is the other aspect of it is the group breakouts. Well, the, the Shadow Restraints is the only shield group breakout, so this is where this becomes much stronger for ice because you'll have the initial shield from Shadow Restraints and then the damage reduction shield. So each time you proc it, it makes Shadow Restraints a lot more useful rather than just being kind of like a gimmicky shield with a low base shield multiplier. The other group breakout powers will just give like a group uh, immunity and control effects, stuff like that. But at least Shadow Restraints with Ice being a shield, it kind of extends that. So how this works is that I'm going to pop Shadow Restraints. I'll get the initial shield and then you see here, this will be the animation for the shield bubble. So this is what I'll get and every group member will get as well. So it's going to last for 30 seconds or, or basically the, the six hits. And the way to look at the six hits is that it's not OP from the aspect where, because I mean, at the same time, if you've got a tank, really the group's not taking six hits. It's going to, it's going to come into really play in two factors. One, if say, for example, you're doing like, uh, I'll take like the source wall elite, for example, you got those ads that spawn in the back. If the tank doesn't pick up those ads and they lunge a healer, then with this, uh, if they pop a group breakout or even like Phoenix cannon, whatever, whenever ads spawn and the tanks may not be able to pick them up right away, you have the advantage now is that you can just pop the group breakout, give that healer a shield where that situation without a shield, that healer could have died just from not being able to aggro the ads in time. So now you can give them six hits grace period on those ads to be able to pull it in time. And the healer's not going to need all six hits. Usually just one or two hits or like a power from the ad that's going to kill the healer. But there's a chance that they now could survive with that 35% damage reduction. And then you have time to pick up the, the ads. So that greatly increases the survivability in those situations of the healer where it could just be a healer dead. And then it could lead to a group wipe. The second situation is that uh, for dots. So any kind of dot, it, you, you know, you could take the source wall lead dots. That's... Um, not the not the purple field because that's essentially the, the one shot ability, but any, any kind of damage field on the ground, fire, whatever the fire trails. Now, if, if a group members are going to get caught in that, that's where the six hits play. So basically, you have thirty five percent damage reduction on the first six hits of the of that dot, which gives players more survivability and a chance to get out of the field and survive. The, the, think of like the damage spores in uh, the return to or the elite or even regular. So you get six hits of that spore damage to be able to have that damage reduction so that that's that's where that hugely comes into play and that what makes this a mandatory artifact not artifact mandatory ally passive uh and it's it's very strong so taking a look at the actual shield aspect of it here we'll just proc murder machine here i'm going to pop shadow restraints so i've got the initial healed so even if i don't get hit i'm still getting the duration of, of the, the actual shield so you can see there, Inspiring Break could absorb 32 to 25, but that was one hit. So I'm still getting another hit, absorb that one. I'm, I still have the shield, it still hasn't expired yet, and now basically now it's expired because I'm at the six hits. And what's broken is that it should be in a longer cooldown, but I'm now getting access to it like every, you saw a little Superman symbol there too. But uh, now I'm getting it here. So you can see it doesn't, it's not as strong because a six hits for a tank is very quick. Um, now say in like survival mode or some instances where like, even in like the source wall elite like on some of the bosses six hits uh, isn't 
um, happen over a much greater period of time. So with that, you're going to get maybe like a, a longer duration of that uh, damage reduction, which is huge. But in, if you're fighting ads or any kind of pile like that, six hits is going to be over instantly. So that that's why it's not too overpowered, because in any kind of situation with ads, it's going to be gone within a few seconds. It's still going to help for survivability, don't get me wrong. Especially when you play, like, say you combine it with like ice, or not ice, but uh, say rage. Where rage is already getting up the heal back, but then you have the damage reduction on top of that. So it, it's really strong for adds. It's just that that six hits window is going to be coming up very quick. So think of it like if you're fighting like ten adds, or like say if you're doing like the font like a perpetual in, in Source Wall Elite, you've got all those adds on top of you. You pop the shield. I mean, it's great for the group because uh, they get those six hits, but those six hits for you are going to be gone in like a, a second or two. So really, it does help your survivability, but it doesn't put it in the OP range because it's going to be over so quickly because of the amount of adds on you. So that's that's the one aspect there. But still, 100% completely mandatory. Uh, it's going to be interesting how this plays out because with the cooldowns being the way they are, you can be in a situation where you can cycle this, and then I'm going to show you a clip in the moment where it works in DPS stance. So if you have like a tank power set using this in DPS stance, then they could cycle it as well. And the, the big difference with DPS stance, what I'll talk about there in a moment, is that since it's based not on stats, if your base shield multiplier doesn't come into play. So it, it's it, it might need some fine-tuning in terms of uh, cooldown work and, and overlapping and kind of cycling, but at the same time, it, it's still going to be 100% mandatory. The only issue that it could result in tanks is that you're going to... Most tanks don't have a position for the group breakout in their loadouts. Like, say, for example, if we swap to, like, um, even Rage or, or, like, Earth. You know, there's not too many Earth loadouts that have Soothing Sands in them if you're doing, like, Jackhammer. Um, because a lot of time, if you didn't need a group breakout, you didn't run it. Where am I running? Uh, soothing Sands. So, now, the same thing with, like, Atomic. Uh, let's... Atomic, you didn't necessarily use. Actually, that's probably a much better example. We'll go. We'll show Atomic here because it, it kind of switches up your play style now with Atomic. Because with Atomic, using your shortcut, you did Proton Remedy. You get the a large self heal. It's 12 second cooldown to your shortcut. But if you're going to use this ally now, now you have to use uh, Neutrino Blast, which is 18 seconds. So you have an extra six seconds to have to worry about not being able to shortcut into your aura, and you don't get the healing now. The Proton Remedy. So yeah, you get the healing through combos, but Proton Remedy itself is a, is a, a really good strong self heal as well, especially with the, like any kind of spec into resto. So and, and you get the um, crits and stuff like that. So that's it's going to be a different play style for Atomic because you won't be able to run Proton Remedy and Neutrino Blast. You can, but it's going to nerf your load anyway. Then you have to drop Hard Light Shield or something else, and then Atomic needs both. So that that's going to where it's going to come into play. Um, same thing with Rage. I mean, Rage, you'd usually use, like, three shields. So you'd have, like, Hard Light Shield, Redirect your Rage, and, like, Dash Attack or, or um, Perfect Poise. But now you're going to have to run Ire. So some tanks would be, Rage tanks would be nice because then you have Ire for the group breakout in terms of Rage Crashing, which is going to uh, come into play. But really, that's the main issue here. It's just basically you're now... Essentially, every power except ice, because ice ran in shadow restraints anyway most of the time because it is actually shield at least. It's not just a group breakout, but it's more so just finding the place in your loadout now for a group breakout because you're going to have to drop something else that was useful. So either like an ad juggle power, like an AoE pull, or like another shield. So that's that's where you kind of, is the trade-off. So that's about the only thing with this ally is, is kind of factored in the group breakout into your loadout. More Some tanks is going to be difficult than others, and you're going to have to get used to that new play style. But uh, that's essentially what this is. So let's cut to the this uh, spreadsheet, and I'll just show you the rank breakdowns. Okay, for inspiring breakout. So rank five when it first starts, you get a ten percent damage reduction, eighty second cooldown. Right now the cooldowns aren't working as intended as you saw. So when that uh, gets, gets corrected, fifteen percent at seventy. 7 will be 20% at 60, 25 at uh, 50 seconds, 30% for 40 seconds, 35% for a 30 second cooldown. So that's where the rank breakdowns for the passive ability for Inspiring Breakout. So 
So just to quickly show uh, this aspect in a, in a group setting. Uh, now technically with the shield ability, if we uh, read the actual description, it just says when using a group breakout ability, you and your allies get a damage reduction shield. Now, so technically this is gonna apply in DPS stand. So if I, I use Shatter Restraints, I'm in the group, my group, all the group members are gonna get that damage reduction shield. Uh, and where this can kind of play a factor is that um, well, to determine if this is working as intended or, or when it eventually releases, uh, if they decide to use this, because you run into a situation where if you have a tank power set uh, in DPS stance, like whatever, fire DPS, rage DPS, whatever you're going to have it, if, say if they're using like a, a combination of like the clarion artifact uh, and this uh, ability, you've got now you've got a DPS power and DPS stance. That's going to get like the f you get the full heals from Clarion, especially if they're if they're going to be spec like say um, uh, like Resto Prec or whatever. Um, and then you're going to get the the full clear on heals. You're going to get the full Clarion shield, and then they're going to have every 30 seconds this 35 percent at rank 10, 35 percent damage reduction shield, all from a DPS power. And then if you combine that with the uh, so if you you run into situations like say you're doing an alert with like you know three DPS four DPS whatever you don't really need a healer because now you have the damage reduction shield coming into play and I know it's every thirty seconds but still um, you know, it's going to come into play in, into a in the content so that's where we'll have to see here I am not a fan of this being used in DPS dance I think it should just stick to tank roll. Uh, because, like I said, it's gonna it could lead to situations where it just becomes more overpowered. But I mean, at the same time, it is a rank rank ten legendary artifact with the art the uh, impact uh, with the artifact XP and the investment and the catalyst. So uh, that's a toss up. I mean, uh, this is just to show you that it does work in DPS stance. Whether or not it's gonna have release like that, or whether it should release like that, that's kind of up for more of a debate. But at the same time, if you have a DPS every thirty seconds, being able to give it, just a DPS. So it doesn't even matter how it could be alert content could be running like elite plus or, or survival mode or whatever it doesn't matter. You have the, you have a tank power set DPS being able to give a 35% damage reduction shield to the entire group every 30 seconds. That's what, that's what I don't agree with. I, I think it can lead to situations where that's going to be OP and rely too heavily on having this ally. Cause especially same time, if you have like a multi, if you have like a right rage prec, uh, whatever fire might DPS, whatever, both could technically do that and you could rotate. So then the entire group is going to have, you know, a rotation of this damage reduction shield, which is huge. So that's what I don't agree with. Um, I think it's going to lead or could lead to situations where it's just too overpowered. Okay, so taking a look at Superman's second ability, Kryptonian Channeling, uh, we see channeled abilities are immune to interrupt and give bonuses. Uh, if we go to the better description on that, and go to the Fortify, we can see here, upon you, uh, while channeling, gain the following bonuses. Channel ability is no longer vulnerable to interrupt, increase resistance to control effects, can increase def defense and toughness. Does not stack with empowered channeling. And you can see it ranks six, which is just the first rank that you earn it at. 5% uh, defense and 5% and toughness. Uh, now, just if anyone's curious about toughness, toughness is PvP related that has zero impact on PvE. Now, we already have a couple things in the game that already do this. So that's where the redundancy kind of sets in. So taking a look at the actual Empower Channeling hand mod, you can see that it gives 5% uh, defense and toughness. So basically, rank 6 of Superman is the exact same uh, defense stat-wise or bonus stat-wise as in power channeling. Uh, and then same thing with in solar amplifier. If you're using this save for like heat vision, you can see at rank 200, the bonus will be installs and in power channeling tactical mod, which is basically just in power channeling. Now, if we look at this list here, for example, um, ice. So for ice is going to be, it's going to make uh, glacier flash, arctic gust, and avalanche, and freeze ray invulnerable. What you don't see is Frost Blast. Frost Blast is a channel just like anything else. So as an example here, actually we'll take we'll take out the ally just so you can see it as well with the uh, icons. So we're gonna swap this ability here. So right now I don't have the ability equipped. I don't have Empower Channeling in the hands and I don't have Soul Amplifier on. So now if we look at the finisher, Glacier Flash, you can see above, I have the vulnerability icon above my head. So that means if I was lunged, I'd be interrupted on Glacier Flash. 
Now, if I put the, uh, well, for example, if I put Soul Amplifier on, you can see the vulnerability icon is gone. So that's technically what uh, Empower Channeling on, and then same thing if I if I switch abilities to Kryptonian Channeling with Glacier Flash, I don't have the vulnerability icon. However, with Frost Blast, I still do. So really, all this has done is they've taken Empower Channeling and just added it to an ally. So we already have Empower Channeling on Soul Amplifier. We already have it as a hand mod, which are, you know the hand mod is easily accessible to anyone. Uh, I mean, the max damage is 2%, so I mean, if it's, if it's a really big deal if you're getting interrupted, then, like, say for munitions, a munitions DPS, if you're not running in contact with a tank, you're per, you're always going to get lunged on your on your abilities, which is super annoying. So, I mean, you can even just throw this in your hands for running, like, open world content or alert, etc. Uh, you don't always need, uh, unless you're running heat vision, and then you can use solar amplifier. So, that's the bit of the redundancy. All they've done is just increase the actual defense and toughness while you're channeling, which, I mean, is a good thing. Uh, I mean, that's that's not a bad thing because while if you're my DPS doing finishers and stuff like that, then you have the ability to survive now or the, the chance to survive rather than having to cancel your finisher channel and then move move away. So that's that's where that could come into play. But the way they have it described is misleading because they say channel abilities. Even, even in, the, in the long description of the actual thing, it says, while channeling, gain the following bonuses. So essentially what it needs to say is that this is just empower channeling, not to confuse players, because if I have this equipped, like right now I have, I have the allies equipped, I have empower Chan Kryptonian channeling equipped. We'll see if I can get these bosses to lunge me. That was just an interrupt. Can you please actually interrupt me? Yeah. See, there we go. So. All, all the Kryptonian channeling is on this on this ally, on this very expensive legendary ally, is just the is just the tactical mod, and it's not even a rework. All it is is just increasing the defense and toughness. Which I'll I'll cut to the the spreadsheet here just to show you each level because uh, um, just so you're aware of if you're leveling up a, a, a Superman, if you're going to keep him at level six or six to ten, basically the difference in damage. So basically, the only component of this. Kryptonian channeling, because say, for example, if I move up to seven, just to show you before the spreadsheet. For example, at uh, level seven, it's going to be 6%. Level eight is going to be 7%. So we get a little bit extra defense while we're channeling, which could lead to some situations where you don't have to cancel your channel. You can keep going. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't actually do something that would actually be useful and make all channeled abilities no longer interrupt. That would be huge. Uh, because since we know this is tactical channeling, the same thing is going to happen with the tactical mod that it's going to with the ally. Like, say, for example, if you're using heat vision and you get grounded, you're going to get knocked out of heat vision. Even though you have this, even though you have tactical channeling or empowered channeling mod, whichever, it's just the grounding effect still going to knock you out just like it does in content. So um, it's it's a shame that all re this really is just, the, is just the mod we already have existing on two things, the hand mod and soul amplifier, just with some extra defense. So... Um, it's one of those things where, I mean, these ally abilities don't have to be perfect, but at the same time, they had a chance to actually improve upon this, improve upon the ability to actually make it useful, especially with the amount of XP and investment a legendary ally is. So it's kind of a missed opportunity with that, with Kryptonian channeling. So we'll cut to the spreadsheet quickly and I'll show you, uh, just the, the, uh, rank progression. Okay, so for the breakdown for Kryptonian channeling, uh, what I did mention, uh, forgot to mention as well, is the control resistance. Control resistance is really hit or miss. I mean, it's in the description it sounds OP, but control resistance doesn't always work uh, because sometimes you have scripted um, effects where if, if something is going to ground you, it's going to ground you. It's not like you have 20, extra 25% resistance to being grounded. No, you'll be grounded because that's what this, the, the ability does or the... Or the uh, mechanic in the raid if it's scripted to ground you it's going to ground you regardless so the control resi control resistance is more myth in dc universe online uh, that's, that's that's one of the biggest myths is that you can actually have an increased control resistance because as you can see if anyone's been an atomic tank 
then you'll know that control resistance is a myth because your your aura is supposed to give you that greater resistance and you're always constantly getting juggled or stunned uh, and which you know causes you to drop your aura or or knocked out of a, a combo or anything like that so you know i i've been i've seen this increased control resistance from different mods and everything else but it, it's it's pretty much a myth uh, sometimes it could work but largely a myth so that's why i kind of ignore that part but so rank six that was the intent the and power channeling actually the tactical hand mod and solar amplifier give me the five percent now we get six uh, percent seven eight and at uh, ten is ten percent so an extra 10 percent defense while you're in a channel like i said before that could lead to the extra survivability where you don't have to cancel it so that is a good thing uh, but at the same at the so that's that's something to consider as well is just to have that survivability we'll have to see uh, that that's hard to test because that's more in like alert content like say for example um you're in like a return to the earth elite and on doomsday or devastator and not uh, doomsday devastator or ultraman or something like that and he's going to lunge you or or maybe do that ground fracture if i can stay in, in heat vision or my finisher while he does ground fracture and not die i mean that's great uh, i mean yeah technically i should be canceling it and moving it to so the healer doesn't have to heal me but at the same time you know that's a damage loss so we'll have to see how that plays out but uh, it's still double the defense, which is still going to be a huge factor. 